Butter B. Rocker on Transparency Talks Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of Transparency Talks Podcast. I am your girl, Butter B. Rocka. It is a pleasure to be here. We are all alive and that's wonderful enough to be grateful for. Listen, I have an amazing show for you today. We have award-winning actress and director, Miss Wendy Morgan. <laughs> I'm loving your music. So I, I saw you back this. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet you. How it's great nice you to meet you as well. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so, Miss Miss Wendy Morgan, can you give everybody a little bit of background about yourself? Um, I'm a mum. I'm an actor. I've been an actor for 45 years. A mum for thir- 34. Vegan for 11. I'm a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, what else is there to say? Oh, and I made a film. <laughs> so I know the accent. Where are you from? I'm. I was born um, in Raglett in Hertfordshire, and then I moved to Essex. So you might hear a little twang of that. Where are you from? I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, divine! Have you, have you been to Atlanta before? I think I'm. I think I might have done over the time. I think I. I think I have. Okay. And it was, yeah, amazing. I've I've never been there, but it sounds great. We're here. It's chilly. Although today it was actually rather mild. We were swimming. It's January. Oh well, no, sorry, first of February, isn't it? Second? Oh, I don't know. First. It's February first. Okay. We were swimming today in our beach and it was really warm outside the sea, cold in, but quite unusual for this time of year which is probably not good in the sense of climate and stuff but okay okay hmm. how are, is it warm there you know this weather is very bipolar because the other day there was snow everywhere and then the next day it was warm i'm like okay so yeah this yeah. is how you get pneumonia <laughs> <laughs> variety is the spice of life exactly uh-huh. exactly so you are a seasoned veteran, 45 years. I thought it was 43, 45 well, years. In the I end. just added them on because they're true, which is I maybe shouldn't. I'll get away with 43 then, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get started in the industry? Um, I went for an audition with my wonderful friend, Jacko Jackchick, who's a brilliant musician. He's just been playing with uh, King Crimson. And um, we were both auditioning for a show, uh, a a touring company called The Bubble Theatre. And um, I got the gig, although not uh, uh, like straight away, a uh, a week after we auditioned, I got the gig because someone dropped out. And Jacko didn't, and so he's a big rock star, and I'm a actor. So although he is an actor as well, so that's how I got started in the industry. So I was with them for a, for a year, touring round the parks in London in a great big yellow tent that we we all had to help erect, and it was the theatre. We oh. had a we had a little beer tent to the side. It was fun touring all the London parks. Yeah, that's that not great. So yeah. you, you were acting and singing, or yeah, we it, we did musicals. Yeah, and I played saxophone at the time, tenor sax. Nice. Not brilliantly, but yeah, I made noise with it, and it was all I was I was kind of smaller then, so it was almost the same size as me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So it was musical theatre. Um, I was gonna go to drama school. I got into four but then I got this job so I thought hey maybe I'll just do that so I kind of trained a little bit okay um, as I was going along but learned on the job as they say yeah 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 what what do you think has been the difference from when you started like the auditioning process to now 
Um, well, a script would land as, as it went forward and television and film, I was going up for things like that. You'd get a script posted to you, you know, the whole script, which would land. So I used to have piles of scripts on my shelves of, so you'd read a whole script and then you'd go up for an audition and they'd give you weeks to prepare. But now it's like tomorrow morning you have to be off book and do yeah. this and you're like, oh, it's very fast. Uh, it's not for the faint hearted. That's for sure. you got to know your tech if you're self taping, you know, you got to get up on your tech and get, your, you know, film it and edit and, everything lights and yeah yeah so it's uh actors today oh respect to come into the industry like like so on it they've got to be so on it they are on it you know mm -hmm. and so one has to up one's game to keep up with everyone who's coming into this this very kind of full-on yeah people are hungry now so they have a lot of people auditioning and then, you know, with the internet and everything, you get it super fast and you do super have to be on top of it very quickly. Yeah. I mean, I guess everyone was always hungry as an actor, but That's it seemed there was more time for everything, much more time. But when you say they give you, they used to give you the whole script. So you would have to know the entire script or just a portion of it? No, but you'd get sent the script. I mean, you do get sent script still but it's uh you know you get sent it online so but then you'd get it through the door so it was quite sweet to have a lovely great big board of paper although it's better for the trees to right sure. yeah but yeah more time more time and you know i think then i remember we could just be actors mostly and then we'd sign on do a thing called sign on when we were resting but there's no rest now you can't it's hard unless you're very lucky to just be an actor you've got to have side hustles and you know, so many people with so many you know you know right yes ma'am <laughs> So you have worked with some renowned legendary names in the industry, Anthony Hawkins, Elizabeth Taylor, Tony Curtis, and so many more, Richard Gere. Can yeah. you tell us about what was some of your most memorable times and moments? Um, I don't know, walking up some staircase, which didn't go anywhere on a movie and sitting at the top with Elizabeth Taylor or being on a film set with Vanessa Redgrave and like being a little duckling and she strode across the set in these wonderfully long legs and I was trying to keep up with her. And, oh yeah, man, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Loads of times of brilliant fun. What fun to meet so many actors, famous and not famous. They're been a, they're pretty cool, fun bunch. People. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Laugh so much. I tell you, I would love to be on a set with Ricky Gervais, who wouldn't, because these outtakes, when he laughs, I'd love to be around someone who does that so much. I'd love it. There was a couple of actors that I, I could, Simon Rouse, we were, we were on The Bill. Uh, he was a regular on a series called The Bill, which isn't around anymore. And um, we... Every time I'd, I'd, I'd guest on there every now and again, and we couldn't work together. I just found him so funny doing nothing and just cry with laughter. The poor directors were like, oh, God. In the end, they'd have to separate us sometimes because we, <laughs> we couldn't look at each other, which is a bit worrying. <laughs> Luckily, not many of those. But What do you think is missing in today's industry? Um, more parts for me. <laughs> I feel you there. And more parts for me, Jesus. Right? As, oh, what's missing? Time. A bit more time for everyone to prepare. Mm -hmm. So we're not so stressed and going, oh, we've got to do in our side hustles and you've got to learn. And so maybe, maybe a bit more time mm -hmm. for that. So it's less stressful. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I I'm sure there's loads of other things that I haven't thought of, and I think later on. What do you think? I think that's what's missing 
is I would say more roles, but I would say more roles for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. More roles for us. If yeah, I just... see so many roles out there and then you just see a little bit for me. I just wish there was right. more. Because there's so much being produced, isn't there? Yeah. Right? There's so much content. So we guess we have to be patient. Right. Or, or, or we can do like you did. Which, and make your directorial debut with your docudrama, Mercy. You could do that, but make sure to get a brilliant, good budget. Otherwise, again, you're in this awfully stressful situation. So, yeah, get a budget and make a film where you are. I did yeah. try and write a film where I was like, you know, the Vanity Project, but it always kind of went, nah, boring. It didn't work, so that this is what came out. Okay, so let's talk about your your docudrama. Okay. Can mm -hmm. you give us a quick synopsis of the project? It's the life and death of a factory farmed pig and all the people who connect with that industry, be they consumer, the worker, the, the vegan who stands and says no, or you know, and the animals. So it was to show, and the planet, what it, the impact that factory farming has on the planet. So a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, so, but the life and death is shown through the eyes of a pig called Mercy, and then through some other characters as well. So what made you come up with that concept? I actually think it's brilliant to, to do it from the point of view of a pig. Thank you. It was, it kind of developed. What made me come up with it was in 2011, um, an organization called Animal Aid did an investigation into nine abattoirs in the UK and eight out of the nine were found to be abusing the animals. And one of those abattoirs was not far from where I live. So I was shocked and intrigued and found another there was a facebook group that said let's go and stand there and say no and try and raise awareness for this and after it took a, a while while these cases went through to court and i learned so much about that i became vegan uh, during that time because i could no longer sit with my ethic and what i'd learned I had to change my ways a little bit, although I've a lot of vegetarian. So, um, yeah, so uh, I found it very traumatizing what I saw and that it wasn't localized, it was global. And I didn't know how to process it. So I've, I like writing my, my grandfather, I've just found out who he might be, was a journalist. And I have always loved writing, but not very long things so it's I started writing and it just became long and it became because I know plays and that's the form it came out in a play at first and then it kind of developed into a screenplay but it kind of took me and I felt I had to write it I did try and stop sometimes because it was mm -hmm. a bit you know a bit hard work mm -hmm. so but um yeah so that's kind of what happened so it's the processing what I, what I'd seen I didn't know how to it was my best way of processing it kind of turning it into something mm -hmm. and it morphed into the way it is now okay after 11 years <laughs> <laughs> so oh my how gosh. was your first experience debuting as a director I mean did you face any challenges along the way um yeah you know can I direct? Oh, who, who do I think I am? And I'm not, I don't love being the one who tells other people what to do. I like being told what to do. I don't like to be on that front line. I love supporting people and being slightly, you know, just back there and occasionally coming forward. So to be that one, mm -hmm. I found really challenging. It's not my nature to be commanding in that way unless I'm acting it you know mm -hmm. that's different 
cut. Okay, I think he's been back to being silly on me, you know. But it was like some, I don't know. So that was quite challenging. The 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 working with actors felt natural because we're actors, right? And so we know how that feels. So that felt okay. And I knew my subject pretty much. So I knew kind of where we were going with it. And because of working anyway in films, we know what angles are and shots are and maybe... So that that was fun, all that, you know, just playing, really. But raising money is was not my forte. <laughs> so that was hard. Definitely. I did my first feature film that's in post right now. And it it is? Like, yes, You directed it? I did, and it I was want... very tough. <laughs> it was very tough. Like you just said, commanding other people, trying to get your ideal out there, hoping that you, like, I'm, I'm used to being up front. I am. Right. But this was a whole different feel for me. So having to project what I have in my mind and get people to, you know, do exactly what I see and not let, be open to people giving you suggestions, but also not letting it taint what you feel you know, with your own project. So that was the struggles that I personally had with, you know. Yeah, hearing everyone. Yes. And then going, great, but let's do it my way. Exactly. <laughs> or <Great>. whatever. <laughs> huh. um, did you write it? I did. You did? Yes, Are you starring in it, I hope? I am. <laughs> yes. And Very I well done. In it. I have huh? my music. I'm, a, I'm an international recording artist, so of course I have my music I in it. I have, yeah, yeah. I, I, I decided I was going to make sure I put everything I could in my own project. Can we high five a little bit now? High five. Respect yes, to you. You did it. <laughs> very, very well done. And we that, like, yeah, right. Yes, yes. I mean, mine stars the issue stupid move maybe another one <laughs> if i have the energy but well done thank you i'd love to see it i can't wait where can we see it I'm well wondering. it's still in post but once it's done then i have some shopping that i'm doing with different distributors that's already set in place so i hope you're going to work with that fabulous pr company that are, is run by nicole and gotham you know actually i contacted her because She's sending me some really good people that I've been interviewing and, and, you know, I am about to put out this film. And so she sounds like she might be a person that I at least need to have a conversation with, see if we connect and everything. So I'm definitely going to talk to her. Cultura PR with a, with a K. I have to plug them because they have been amazing. I've never had a publicist in my life. I didn't really know what it was all about. Mm -hmm. um, silly me. <laughs> but for the film, uh, they've just been beautiful and got me to meet you, for example, and help the film get in the American film market and get a distributor to help me sell it, you know. Right. And they're the loveliest people. That's so clever. Oh, I can't. I could go on and on about Nicole and Gotham. Yeah, they're brilliant. Nice. Yeah. So very well worth it. I'm definitely going to have a conversation with them. Good. So Mercy was selected by the Vegan Film Festival, correct? Yeah. How does that feel? I mean, that is great. <laughs> yes. I mean, each time there was a selection, it was like you know like squealing and like a little pig really um just I never thought it would get this far I never thought I'd feel you know it would end up as a I never thought really I didn't have that I didn't think oh I'm gonna sell and make film sell it and then go to festival I didn't really think I didn't have that belief mm -hmm. in myself I don't think but it, here we are Mm -hmm. And it's everybody, it's the team, you know, that have, have made it with me. So we share it collectively as a as a product. So it's uh, definitely a team, big team effort. Absolutely. A village, a village of people. Someone said to me, um, 
uh, I think I can remember who it was, this wonderful casting director said to me that making a film is like having a village. It's a village of people. And it really, really is. It is. It is. I had 32 cast members and I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How did you, can I ask a personal question about how do you manage to get your funding? Were you good at that? Did you crowdfund or? We can talk you? off. We can talk off. Let's. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. So you received the Evening Standard Most Promising Newcomer Award. What was your first emotional response to this reward? Because I, was, well, I can't wait to start getting awards. <laughs> uh, well, I was a young un and I'd just done my first film after that that show, uh, mm -hmm. that theatre job, The Bubble, and it was Yanks, John Schlesinger, and had this wonderful supporting role called Molly, this little bus conductress with, you know, and that was with Richard Gere and Vanessa Redgrave, Rachel Roberts and all these people. So, you know, I was surrounded by fantastic, fantastic people. And it was amazing. Just got this award and I was like, oh, I still got it hanging on the wall. And it's cute and all. Yeah, uh, it was my mum at the theatre where it was being announced, screamed. She'd always scream at things. And I was like, oh no, how embarrassing. And we went, we all went home on the bus to my auntie's house and had a little party, you know. It was yeah. Cute. Yeah, we were yeah. in London. And you've also uh, been Best Supporting Actress for The Office, Best Supporting Actress Online Awards. I mean, yeah. Right well, uh, again, yeah, that was a really sweet um, uh, company. We were doing this lovely play and yeah, it, you don't win these things alone. You're absolutely you know, you're in a you're in a really great company. So what do you love the most, directing or acting? I think I'm an actor, yeah, to at heart and for my sins. Um, I'm a, I'll be an actor till the day I'm not here anymore. But it was great being able to do the film. It was lovely being able to direct. I don't know if it's a one-off. Uh, who knows if I moved again to do something else. But I think acting I love and, you know, I just want to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, it was a particular project. I couldn't let any, I just needed to do that, you know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, but yeah. we'll see. But but what about you? I definitely plan on doing more films. I will definitely be directing more films. I'm already getting some concepts for my part two of my film. And, yeah, I'm going to be doing more. So ah, good. I'm about that. That's exciting. It, yeah, well, it, by the way, that little play that I have, the lovely play that I was do, did that uh, award for was called Hatched and Dispatched. It was a cute play with a lovely cast and great writing. And yeah, we did that at the Park Theatre. It was fun. Yeah, that sounds good. That yeah. Sounds really fun. So you 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 write for you write plays as well as film. Um. Well, Mercy was a play originally, like it started off as a play. Okay. And then I did it as a one woman show, kind of morphed it into like I played all the parts at a local pub called The Railway here where I live. And um, then some friends said, no. So, I mean, that was a one off. I haven't written a play. Okay. Yet. Okay. I've written another screenplay, two okay. other screenplays, one short and one feature. Okay. So that I birthed them, but not, I haven't you know, produced them yet. Mm -hmm. So how important is it to have a mental health stability in this industry? Because as we both know, it can be very stressful. And what strategies can you give? Well, it's absolutely the one of the most important things I can think of health in all, in all areas, mental fit and physical and spiritual. You know, uh, Long periods of unemployment make you feel, 
oh, you know, the no makes you feel, oh, you know, awful. Rejection constantly or being overlooked. We all know these things. Everybody knows what that's like. And the highs as well, you know, they're another thing and fame for people or, you know, and money. And so constant, it's not, a, I don't think there's a, for me, there's not one thing I do and it's not one time. It's a daily job. Sometimes I don't need to do it. I feel like I'm fine, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of days, especially now, I think, um, we've been locked down. I had a knee injury and I couldn't get out when I'm better now. And so I'm doing a panto soon, this improv panto called, oh, yes, it is. So I'm three months out of my ten, uh, my uh, ligament injury on my knee. And that was challenging. So all these things are really challenging and mental health. So I do a lot of things. I try and talk nicely to myself. I think mm -hmm. I have a habit of negative self-talk. So it's a habit that I, I, I constantly work on. Um, and trying to be nice to myself, mixing with people who affirm me, who, who, who dig me staying away from people who don't dig me so much because right. I don't need any more negativity than I have already in my head. So that and uh, just constantly trying to be physical. I, I swim a lot in the, the sea. I find co cold water thing really great for anxiety and any kind of depression. I know a friend who's come off his depression medication since he's been cold water swimming and sometimes we only swam today for six minutes but i swim regularly it even dip but it's cold i see yeah mm -hmm. and uh so it's like i don't know how cold it was today it's about seven degrees maybe so cold water swimming breathing techniques i have this lovely little technique that i do where i breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth three times concentrating on the sensation in the palms of my hands just that kind of just because when you're concentrating on the sensation in the palms of your hands you can't think of anything else mm. you can't worry try it it's really good and you, your hands tingle and you're just doing this in breath and everything just lowers the whole thing but i mean doing it for myself it's easy to tell some other people but when i'm stressed i kind of don't tend to do it because you're in a habit of your own stress so it's a constant work mm -hmm. i don't know if you have any tips you can share i think you gave some really good tips um i haven't tried the breathing technique but that is something that i should try breathing is so key patsy rodenberg has written a book about it um I think I can't. I think it's called presence. Mm -hmm. But what we when I was at the national, Patsy was uh, this amazing voice coach. That I've had many brilliant voice coaches, but she would do um, that before the show. You'd come down and do a warm up, and like my great <coughs> dear old mate David Ryle would say, I'm always warm, and we'd go down and he'd come down and he'd be like, oh, I don't need to do this because I'm always warm and I felt the same. But it went in, you know, as much as I don't know, I didn't, you know, who need, you just want to do your own thing. And um, But later I realised the power of breathing. Mm -hmm. Like if I was in a bad situation where I felt a bit tim intimidated by someone and i talked to patsy about this and she said breathe them away and i went what do you mean and she said concentrate on your breathing because that will give you a focus and i think you can apply this in any situation if you're nervous or going for an interview or i don't know whatever concentrate on your own breathing so it needn't be negative for a negative thing it can be for a positive thing if you're going in to take your award which you will soon for your movie yeah when you're walking up to get your oscar breathe not them away you can breathe them in like breathe, <laughs> just breathe and, and it's a it's a kind of primal feeling it's a primal thing we live on the breath mm -hmm. so breath is powerful 
I do use breathing in singing. Anytime I'm getting ready for a show, I use that technique, but I haven't thought about it to use it in acting, but that's, that is, it makes sense to do it in all avenues. Yeah. 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 To focus in the, on that breath because it's, it's your energy. It's your, it's your, uh, what do they call it? And uh, it's your chi, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a, it's a good, it's a good uh, exploration. Yeah. Because when you're, <gasps> you're panicking, like I was nervous about this. I don't feel nervous with you. It's yeah. great. But yeah, if you breathe low, it's a good energy to be around. Because if we're around people that are a bit, <gasps> I was, who did I meet? I someone friend was breathing really high and she was so excited. She had me around for dinner and she was so excited to see me. She was wanting to, to be wonderful. And she was really up here. And I said, hey, you're so lovely. You're doing a great job. This is brilliant. <laughs> just breathe like right and she was like oh yeah okay thank you and then she went oh thank gosh <laughs> <laughs> okay so <laughs> how has COVID affected you positively personally and professionally because of course everybody knows that it was a lot of negative with COVID uh should I start with the quick negative um okay. yeah solitary confinement, lack of seeing our loved ones, blah, 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 blah. Stopping, you know, clubs, my jiu-jitsu, couldn't go to jiu-jitsu, we did it online. Positives were the some kind of levelling of, you know, and we could all connect on mm -hmm. Zoom. So I was able to connect with lots of wonderful companies. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look, that's a silly thing. I thought I'd turn it off. It's wonderful um, theatre companies who were doing uh, the show must go online. Were doing the Shakespeare. Um, they did the complete works of Shakespeare, and I was able to join in. And we did plays. And Jenny Hall was forming her companies, uh, and and I was able to work with them. Rebecca Hall and Dan Stevens and all the wonderful actors that we met which might I might not have been able to do that year so it was wonderfully leveling and we could all be in the same room where maybe we couldn't have been so those kind of things were were kind of wonderful mm -hmm. which I'd, I'd not thought of doing before and it suddenly was like oh yeah I can see people and speak where maybe you wouldn't have done that I don't know I didn't really do a lot of FaceTiming and stuff but it was it was great to be able to so artistically to be able to do those things i think were the positives for me and then i we'd meet, make particular efforts to connect well i had a little zoom meeting every saturday with my swimming pals and um yeah we just sat there and we've stopped them now so we meet in person so but it was i don't know so some things were or positive that's good okay so what is the one thing you wish you could do over in your acting career not say no to some things yeah I think I had some times where I was struggling you know and I didn't say yes to some things and I'm not quite even sure to this day I think once I was going through menopause and I didn't know what I was doing I couldn't think I had no HRT they wouldn't give it to me which is good really I'm glad I didn't but I think I at that moment I found it difficult and it was around the time my mum died and I wasn't making great decisions so I lost a couple of jobs that I wished I hadn't, not because I regret anything that's happened since, but that you never know, do you? Mm -hmm. Saying no, saying no, I'd rather say a bit more yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really good stuff. What about you? Uh, man, there's so many things about you, but the interview is about you. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is your process to get ready for a role? depends what the role is so it's always different mm -hmm. very true so sometimes I used to go and look at cards in shops you know greetings cards to find out what I looked what my character looked like or I'd go to the place where 
the the character lived if it was a particular dialect or you know I love the Stanislavski kind of who are you what are you what do you want what's your obstacle and things like that although my wonderful Doreen Cannon who that was the training I did this these summer camps with Doreen Cannon Stanislavski she'd go for TV she'd say if you know if you if you don't need it just don't do it if it's if it's not broke don't fix it but she'd often say what are you doing and I go I don't know I'm she said well what do you mean you don't know you've got you've got to know who, where you've been and where you're going and what who what does that mean to you what what is who gave you that glass you know and suddenly it opened up all these doors of everything that has a your relationship if you look around your own room you've got you're in relationship with everything it could be a sentimental gift or I don't know like Nicole gave me this pen <laughs> you know but ever I so I wouldn't want to lose that I'd be really careful with it and you treat that object differently than if it was a pen you didn't like given to you by someone that you didn't like I don't know you know so different loads of different things but I love the Stanislavski kind okay. of style I want to ask you, but you say I won't. Bet you won't. You'll say no. Yeah, it's about me. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> How can people find you and also find your your film? Turn left at London. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I don't mean to be stupidly facetious. Um, I'm on Facebook a lot. Too much, my son says. I'm um, Instagram, Twitter. Um, the film Mercy. F Film.info is the website. Mercy has its own Facebook page and Instagram page and Twitter page, which is sometimes Mercy Film or Mercy Movie, but you'll, you'll easily find it, I'm sure. Okay. And it has already came out? No, we, not yet. It, okay. it's, it's kind of finished its festival circuit pretty much, although we might be doing a little something that can I'm not sure yet but uh, it's with a distributor in North America and we're look thank you that's all down to the wonderful Couture PA PR sorry Gotham and Nicole um, and so <clears throat> we're going to be looking for UK distribution so hopefully not too much longer but the good thing, or the no, the bad thing actually is that the film will is not obsolete, sadly, because everything that's in it is still going on. I thought it would certainly be obsolete, but it's not, sadly. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I would like to thank you so much for being a part of Transparency Talks podcast, talking about your new film, your directing, your acting and everything. So thank you so much. It's been a delight and a pleasure to talk with you and meet you. And you've made it so fun and easy. And I hope we can get to talk again together, at least, because I'd love to know more about your, your ways and stuff. Be Absolutely. Cool. We we can stay on, but I'm gonna get off. Okay. Yeah. So right. that being said, everybody, we will see you guys later.